Arsenal Fan TV here. Got Mo here in the studio. Mo, listen, January transfer window is fast coming up. We're in December now. And um, this is a big window for Arsene Wenger. Big window for Arsene Wenger. He's had a lot of problems in defence. There's been the old problem of the, the whole defensive midfielder situation. We're getting injuries. Jack Wilshire's out. It's just no end of injuries with yeah. Arsenal. This is an important window. Now, who do you think we need to sign? What sort of players? Who do you think? And do you trust Arsene Wenger? I mean, last January window, he signed Kim Kallstrom. <laughs> right? A player that's got a bad back came in when we needed strengthening. And many people argue that that cost us the title because we didn't strengthen in a time when we were doing really well and then we just had a really bad time of it and fell away. Now, this is an important window for Arsene Wenger. Not only that, he's under a lot of pressure at the moment from the fans. Fans are saying he's stubborn, he doesn't like to spend money. What does he do? This is big for him. Well, look, you know, you said, do you trust Arsene Wenger? And you mentioned Kim Kallstrom. What I would say to that, look at who he signed in the last transfer window. You, I mean, that's one example. I'm not suggesting that you don't trust him, mm. but he also signed Sanchez. He also signed Espina, Chambers, uh, Debushi. He's made brilliant signings. And but, all, all of them are very good signings. So, yes, I do trust mm. him. He didn't sign um, a centre-back. Yeah, And okay. we've been playing this season with having to put in Nacho Monreal in the, that so position. They're two, they're two that's questions. Arsene Wenger's fault, isn't it? Okay, yeah, so there's two <clears> questions. When he signs a player, do I trust his um, judgment in that signing? Yes. Do I trust him to sign everyone that we need? No. And that, that's the worry for me. And that, that goes back to you spend, we spend. I don't mm. trust the club to effectively use all of their resources for the benefit of the playing squad. Mm. Now, for me, it is absolutely crucial, this transfer window coming up more than ever, that we do not try and just squeeze our way into that fourth spot. Because there's been some close calls in the past. Mm. With the new Champions League deal that comes in, the... The TV deal is a 125% increase on what it was previously. And that's going to filter down into prize money and all the, the market pool and all of that sort of stuff. We need to make sure we don't leave it to chance this year. I don't want the final day of the season where Tottenham fans are celebrating because they think they're going through and then they're yeah, left no plumb. As lovely as that was. <laughs> I don't want that mm. risk. I want us to wrap it up, wrap up Champions League qualification so we can really push on next year. This January transfer window, we absolutely have to in my opinion, make sure that we get that and we get it comfortably. We can't leave it to chance. And in terms of who we need to go after, for me, the number one, just how it was in summer, central defensive midfielder is an absolute must. In a way, it's a blessing in disguise that the injuries we've picked up recently are in that midfield spot and in the defensive spot. Because, you know, if these players aren't back come January, Arthur Wenger will be more likely to spend money in them areas. If mm. he did have that full strength um, squad he might think, oh, we've got enough cover. Because let's face it, he had that opinion in summer when he didn't sign a centre-back. Who's to say if everyone's available how they were in summer, he won't reach the same conclusion again. And if Monreal isn't available, and if Arteta, Wilshere aren't available, he may well just think to himself, OK, fine, I have to go and, and mm. do that. We can't afford not to get Champions League qualification. Our business model depends on it. I'm not saying that that's what I'm aiming for. That is the bare minimum. It's a must. Mm. Our business model requires it. Any names that you, you'd say um, that you wouldn't mind seeing coming in? Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Lars Bender. I really, really think he's got he's got the abilities that we need in that central defensive midfield position. I also, um, I've watched Schneiderlin quite closely this year, more closely than last year, mm. because of all the rumours that surrounded him. And I, I'm, I do admire his qualities. I think he's a very, very good player. Very tidy, very disciplined, and also mm. he's got very good distribution. So, you know, any I think with a normal central defensive midfielder, we're taking a step down from Arteta in terms of the passing ability. Mm. We need someone that can maintain that. People talk about William Carvalho. I've never been that confident of him when he's on the ball mm. when I've seen him. But Schneiderlin has got that ability. What about um, a name that I've been hearing recently a, a bandit about is uh, Johan Kabay who was um, of course at Newcastle um, very talented player French international has gone over to PSG hasn't really kicked off for him there well, do you think take yeah, a punt on him? He's not a bad sign <clears throat> and then, you know, the way you have to look at it in my opinion is is he better than Arteta or is he better than Flamini and the answer to that is yes but is he the perfect person to fill that CDM spot 
in my opinion, no. He's not that tough, tackling, hard as nails, no nonsense, leader on the pitch sort of player. And that's the one that I want. So, you know, if it was uh, you get Kabai or you don't get anyone, I'd take Kabai. But if you say Kabai or Bender or Kabai and Schneiderlin, mm. I'd rather have someone that really snaps into them tackles. And I don't think mm. Kabai is that man. Defender? I, I, we definitely need a defender. And, you know, the first half of the season has proved that. In terms of who to get, you know, I... I mean, there's been a lot of talk about Fabian Shaw from Basel. There's Winston Reid has yeah. been mentioned from West Ham. I mean, there's not a lot of really good centre-backs out there, but we need somebody. Yeah, but, you know, we have to remember this isn't our full-time job to scout players and to know who's on the market mm. and who we can get. There's people at the club that should be doing that. And it, I despise the argument when people say, when you say we need someone and they say, well, who are you going to get? That's not an argument to say that we don't need someone. That's not our full-time job. We need to identify a central defensive uh, uh, player to come in. It's not our job to say who that is. We can come up with our examples, but I don't care who it is. We need someone that's at the level to improve our mm. current squad. And yes, we do need someone in there. Mm. Final thing I want to ask you with the January transfer window coming. What happens to Lucas Podolski and to Joel Campbell? These guys, they don't seem to be able to get a game at Arsenal. Um, I don't know. To me, it seems like he doesn't fancy Lucas Podolski at all because he, as soon as Giroud's come back, he's been straight in. Um, he's even played Sonogo in yeah, front of Podolski. Yeah. Joel Campbell's not getting a look in. And he's going to, you know, when Theo comes back, he's got to get past Theo. Yeah. And Oxlade Chamberlain has been brilliant this season. Serge Nabry when he comes back as You've well. You got Nabry. What happens to these guys? You think you think we're seeing the end of them? Could they, could they be gone in January? I'm not sure. I mean, it certainly looks like it with Podolski. You know, I mm. wouldn't be surprised if he goes. But for me, with Joel Campbell, I don't understand the logic of bringing him back. He did really, really well for Olympiacos. We saw him in the Champions League against United. That was brilliant mm. for all Gunas to see. We saw him at the World Cup doing really, really well for Costa Rica. And we all had high hopes for him. Why bring him back to leave him on the bench? Because these are crucial years for a player's development when you're young. And he's not developing. He's not pushing on. What, what you do in training is nothing compared to real first-team action. I'd like to see Joel Campbell go out on loan, just how Wilshere did, you know, and, and get Premier he, League experience. He's been out on loan in the, Premier for about League. the past four or five years. But Robbie, the difference is Premier League experience. Because mm. it's different. The Greek League is not going to prepare you for the Premiership. If you don't have the faith in him currently, stick him out on loan. But the one thing that I would say... Sonogo is ahead of him in the pecking order. I don't understand why. Because for me, Sonogo is very, very lucky to be playing up front for Arsenal at this stage. Remember when Anelka came on the scene, there was something about him that you saw where he started that FA Cup final against Newcastle in 98. No one batted an eyelid because there was something about him. He was a good finisher. He was rapid. You could tell he had world-class potential. And if we ask yourself honestly, have you seen that in Sonogo? I think he's lucky to be where he is playing for Arsenal mm. up front. I think he's very, very lucky. I would put Joel Campbell ahead of him. I'd put Podolsky ahead of him, even though I don't think Podolsky is the right man for the job up front by himself. If you're going to put Podolsky up, he has to play with someone. But if you're not going to utilise Campbell, put him out on, on loan. I would say utilise him, put Sonogo out on loan. But either way, you can't just waste someone's developmental years. But then again, who the hell am I to tell Arsene Wenger how to make sure these uh, youngsters develop? Because he's the master at that. So we have to retain the faith in him, but I would like to see Campbell getting more time. Mm. And Podolsky, you know, the fans love him. He's the best finisher at our club, in my opinion. We do need to utilise him more. When, when, when we're losing a game and we need to bring a sub on, I'd like to see someone like Podolsky come on and come on earlier than what the subs currently come on. Because if one chance falls to one person when you're 1-0 down, I want it to fall to Podolsky. Also, Rosicky. Why is he not playing? Where is he? I know he's not a first-teamer, he's a squad player, but he brings in a lot of impetus when he comes off the bench. I don't understand why he's not ever getting a run. Well, let's hear from you guys. Um, who would you like to see coming in January? You know, leave them in the comments below. Do you trust Arsene Wenger, the man who signed Kim Kallstrom, with a bad back? And Sanchez. In, in the January transfer <laughs> window last year, I've got to say it because it still hurts. I'm still pained by it. I'm still traumatised standing outside that stadium only to hear that it was Kim Kallstrom. Let's hope for better this year. But do you trust Arsene Wenger to spend that money in January? And who would you like to see come in? Leave it in the comments below. This is Arsenal Fan TV along with Mo. Thanks for watching.
Looking for a gift this Christmas? Then check out the AFTVstore.com for all the best gifts. Listen, you can get original t-shirts like this, or like this one, the one I love, the Sanchez one that's flying out the shops. If you want a hoodie, if you want a jacket, scarf, kid stuff, women's stuff, no matter what you want, everything is there for the Gooners. So check out AFTVstore.com for all the latest gifts. And a big Merry Christmas from everybody here at Arsenal Fan TV.